doesn't don't uh, function quite like they used to. I don't know if anybody else has had that problem. <laughs> but uh, okay, Eugene, would you ask uh, prayer at this moment? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for your love and your kindness. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be able to come to your house and hear the word preached and taught. I pray that you be a brother Frank this morning as you bring forth the word of God. I pray that you give him wisdom and knowledge and the power and the power of your Holy Spirit. Help him to be an instrument and vessel that you can work through and use the ministry of our hearts as Christians. Not for being here with the lost and unknown, but you might come to the same grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'll be with all those who are requested for here this morning who are sick and afflicted up and touch and heal and strengthen them and be with uh, Pastor Steve as he's down there in West Virginia and cut the preach of God just the power in the power of the Holy Spirit is going to be the praise of souls to be touched and hearts to be touched and all closer and near to Jesus' name we pray and ask this. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Still on some Bible numerology. Uh, one was unity. Uh, two, uh, I've kind of decided that it's not only division, but it's also uh, reinforcement. And we see over and over again where it might say uh, forever and ever. That's reinforcing. One ever is enough, but it's reinforcing to us as we read it. So I, I think uh, two may have a dual application. That's odd that two would have two, but there you go. Uh, then three, I think, believe, uh, is uh, God's number. And we went over that a uh, uh, couple of sessions and so forth. Uh, when you read the Bible, numerology is, is to help us to study and to think about what's written down yeah. and see how it applies and uh, it's not uh, just to uh, as a uh, something that's interesting but hopefully it's it's it leads to some application to us uh, certainly uh, as I study that I, I keep thinking about uh, you know how does this apply to me and, and then unfortunately a lot of it does apply to me, and when I say unfortunate, uh, I'm not doing maybe what I'm supposed to be doing, so uh, I think it's it's good to look at our own selves and uh, go from there. Now, number four, number four, I believe, is uh, the number for the world. And uh, we're going to look at some scriptures. If you will turn with me to uh, Genesis, we'll start out there. Genesis 28. And if you get to 28, then it's verse 14 that we'll look at. <clears throat> and this is why some of these verses, I think, tend to make me think that the, the four is a number for the world. And then we're going to look at a lot of other verses. Before. Okay, if you're there at 14, verse, chapter 28, and it says, And the seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall be all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, on the earth we know what? There's four directions. North, south, east, and west. So that's one of the things I'm bringing out on the, uh, uh, the number four. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah 11, or, yeah, 11, 12. Got to get the right verse. I can't already see either. But 11, 12, <clears throat> Isaiah. 
And it says, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Now that was written, uh, whatever, a time ago, uh, 2,000, 3,000 years ago, whatever uh, time frame it was written. Uh, and, you know, that was not proved until we sent into outer space and they took pictures of the earth and there actually are four corners of the earth. And that was not proven until just in the last, whatever, 50, 60 years. So for a long time, that didn't mean anything to many people. Uh, I can't tell you exactly. I, I think it's one of the corners in the uh, Himalayan mountains, one in uh, uh, mountains in Europe, and one in South America. And I'm not sure what the other fourth corner is, but that was not proven until just what we have to call classify as recent. Amen. But that's the earth, applying to the earth. Now, let's go to Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37 and verse 9. <clears throat> And it says, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breathe and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. But we see here the four winds are spoken of, and that applies to the winds of the earth. Now, a reinforcement of that found in Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 1. <clears throat> and it says, And after these things I saw four angels, there's four there, standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now, there again, we see in relationship to the world, now the earth and the world are a little bit different. The earth is a physical body that we're, we're on. The world is the, uh, the uh, makeup of man and his system. So, but they're living on the, this earth, this planet that we're, we call the earth. So they are related and not quite the same though. So we see uh, the four winds and the four corners are reinforced. There's number two again. It's a reinforcement of the other two verses. So those are applying to the earth, the world that we're living in. So uh, that's where some of the four, <clears throat> uh, the number four applying to the world. Uh, we know God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, Genesis 1.1, if we don't believe that, we're not going to believe anything else in the Bible. Uh, nothing's going to apply to us if we don't believe that. Amen. So uh, we see the planet was created. Now, man fell, and as a result, we have a world system, a worldly system. And there's problems with the world system that we, we have today uh, and have had over the last, whatever, four to 6,000 years or whatever we want, <clears throat> time frame we want to put on it. But, uh, so, let's look at a few things to see for the quantity number, one, two, three, four items uh, that will apply to the world. Let's go to Revelation chapter 5. 
Revelations while we're right there. Revelations chapter 5, and we'll look at verse 9, and then we'll look at verse 13. As we read these verses, see if you can pick out the four that's in it. Verse 9, and he sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hath redeemed, uh, hath redeemed us to God by thy blood, now, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. That's applying to the world. God is available to the whole world. Yeah. Thankfully, uh, just not to America. You know, we, we kind of apply the things that are happening today in, in America, but, you know, the world's a mess. Not only America, but the, the whole world is in a mess. Amen. But here we see kindred. What uh, uh, what 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 does the word kindred mean? Same. I, I'm sorry. Same. 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 Okay, kindred. That's uh, pretty close to being a good definition that Webster would use. He used uh, uh, kindred would be like a family, a grouping, or a race or something of that nature. I'd be kindred. Now, a tongue, you know, the English language is uh, spoken by more people in the world today than any other language. And I think one reason, not because the English are better, I think at one time the, uh, the English nation sent out uh, more missionaries to England I uh, sent out more missionaries than any other country in the world. Uh, now that number is diminishing as yep. almost nearly it's dropping. But uh, uh, the tongue, and I think one of the reasons God inspired the Word of God, the King James Bible, as His preserved Word, that He would take to the whole world, and I think that's one of the reasons why the uh, English language, but uh, but a tongue is still a grouping. Uh, we have people, obviously that takes in uh, many, uh, I take in the groups of race, uh, uh, take in uh, various things of nation, uh, that way, and then we have nations. Uh, that's the nation to the world. So we have we have a group of four applying to the earth, uh, the number four. And in verse 13 of that same chapter, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such are in the sea, all that are in them heard, I say, blessed, and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne. Now, there's actually two groupings there of four. The first one, of uh, which is in heaven and on the earth, that's us now. Now, uh, kind of a kind of an odd saying. And I, I'm not sure I understand all of it, but under the earth. Now, is that applying to those persons in hell? I, I'm not sure uh, uh, that that's right. I, I'm just not sure. And such are in the sea. Uh, now, they speak of creature. Now, that could apply more. Sometimes we think of creature as being a human. Maybe it is. Uh, maybe it uh, increase it includes humans as well as creatures. Now you know uh, we can see God's handiwork in creatures, and certainly many of the creatures God gave to man uh, to use. Whether we domesticate a cow and uh, able to milk it and 
and, uh, and then when it butchered, for, I don't know anybody, I know Brother Aaron, he probably eats beef, but he, he uh, not a, uh, uh, what is it when you're vegetarian, I guess, or vegan, or vegan? No, vegan. I'm not. I'm not. No. no, he's not. I'm not vegan. You know, I didn't think so. I, I, <laughs> coming from his dad, I, I would have not thought so. <laughs> on that score, but but uh, you know, so the creatures of this earth, whether they be man or animal, uh, they are for the purpose of God's purpose. Uh, now, the second set of four there, and that this is what man should be doing: blessing. And honor and glory and power be unto him that sat upon the throne. You know, that's one of the duties man has that God has prepared that, that we should give him the honor and the power and the glory and the blessings that, that he deserves. You know, I'm up here. I wobble up, but praise the Lord, I'm able to wobble. Yeah. You know, uh, I can't run very far, but I can't run any. <laughs> I can wobble a little ways, but uh, you know, I, I, I can soon get out of breath. Praise God, I have the breath. Yeah. You know, any one of these things, if God took away, that'd be the end. Yeah. So we we need to. You know, give him the honor and the praise now. Uh, as God has written, that it reigns on the just and the unjust. So uh, it's not just only for those who are saved. Uh, because if it was, then, you know, everybody would get saved because they wouldn't want to, you know, perish immediately. And so God has given us a free will, and only with free will, uh, you know, if I put a gun to my wife's head and I say, tell me you love me, she probably, knowing that I'm a crackpot, might probably would say she loved me. <laughs> but you know what? Would that make her love me? Now all that would do is make her say it. Why? Because of the danger of not saying. Yeah. And so God has set up our free will. Yeah. Uh, you know, if only we were blessed, only a person was blessed if he if he gave honor and glory unto the the Father. <clears throat> if he didn't do that, he wouldn't be blessed. You know, uh, everybody would do it. They'd want the blessing. But our free will gives us the opportunity to mean what we say. And praise the Lord for that. <coughs> okay. While we're in Revelation, let's go to chapter 7 and verse 9. <coughs> and again, we're looking at the number 4 and how it deals with the world. Verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. Now it goes, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues. Again, those deal, those four deal with the world, and the person's people and the nations and the kindreds of the world. So we want to <coughs> continue to think on four as being the number for the world. Another mark of the world is, uh, let's go to nine in Revelation while we're there. <coughs> nine, chapter nine. Verse 21. 
Well, let's look at, excuse me, let's look at number 10, 9, 10 first. Well, let's look at the, um, well, I tell you what, I, I can't read for nothing here. 9, 15, now we got it, 9, 15. My, uh, my daughter asked if I, uh, if I needed my glasses cleaned, and yes, I do. <laughs> and I should have done, had her do it before I got up here. Nine fifteen. Now thinking about the world, and let's look and see if we can see the four show up, a grouping of four. And it says, and the four angels, well, there's the four, were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Now, here again, how do we measure time on the earth? Well, in Sunday school, you probably measure it by an hour, and you'd hope the hour gets over quickly. <laughs> now, because we have a, a day and we're off, uh, maybe not working, where we can uh, gather together with family, we can go out and eat for a day. That's a, a sort of, you know, I, I don't know how some of you folks are still working, you work maybe five days a week or six days at the end of six days you're happy but it's a measurement of time yeah. then a month you know and uh, what about three months uh, four months or so uh, we'll have Christmas and New Year's will be coming on so we measure time in in months, uh, you know, uh, it'll be a month before something certainly happens. Maybe uh, an event going to take place, a graduation or a, a marriage or something in a month. So man uh, tells time in terms of months as well. And then also a year. Uh, Aaron related to, uh, said that Sarah would be, you know, well, she's not 50, but, uh, <laughs> but it won't be long before she, <laughs> uh, Amen. but it's, uh, but we, we tell time, and you know, that's amazing, if she's 50, I'm only 60. <laughs> I don't quite understand that. But man measures time by, uh, uh, well, we could even go more or less than that, but, but an hour, a, a day, a month, and a year. So we see a grouping of four that applies to the earth, how man operates on the earth. So again, I think the word, uh, the world is... Uh, Related to the number four. Uh, while we're looking in, we're in uh, verse chapter nine. Let's look at verse twenty-one. <clears throat> now, neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorcerers, sorceries nor their fornication, nor their thefts. Now, there's another four. And believe it or not, this is how the world acts. Uh, I don't know about you, there's a lot of places I would not go at night. Mm -hmm. I, I having conversation with my three sisters and brothers and uh, yesterday, and it came up that you know when we were young, uh, we could run around the neighborhood all evening, you know after dark even, and uh, our moms and dads didn't worry about us. 
Well, I know one thing, uh, you know, Sarah's two kids, uh, if they were out and about, I'd be scared to death and running around the neighborhood. You know, with all the, the, the murders and the sorceries and the fornication and all the thefts that are taking place. Amen. I don't know, uh, when we grew up, uh, you know, much of the time we never locked the door in our house. I don't know if anybody remembers those days or not, but but uh, you know what? I lock it, and I, I put the other lock on, and the other lock, and the one here, I put the bar in, you know, for protection. <laughs> and I don't know, but uh, uh, so these things are taking place in the world. The sorceries, how, how, and that takes in so many things, but. Uh, uh, you know, we're living in a wicked time. Amen. Uh, and it's a tough time. I'm not suggesting it's not an easy time to live in. Uh, because we have all these things. I, I don't know. Has anybody been robbed in some fashion? Somebody broke in or went into your shed and stole something or anything of that? Has any had people like that? I, I mean, I, there's most of the time, a uh, many of the time, in fact, the family was talking yesterday, and I told them I had a book, and I loaned it to somebody, and he never gave it back. And my brother said, yeah, he had law books, and he loaned and never gave back, so he, he quit it all together. Well, you know, he got the only book I had, so I, I can't. I had one, so when they took that, that, that was it. But uh, we have we have these things taking place, yeah. and so we're living in a tough time. The world is a tough place to live, yeah. And we're saved, and and we are. I, I'm assuming, I'm uh, looking around. I think everybody in here. Is, knows the Lord Jesus Christ is their personal Savior, and we know where we're heading, but you know what? Before we get there, we may have some bad things happen yeah. due to the world. All right, we're in Revelations. Let's look at chapter 15 and verse 2. <clears throat> Again, we're looking, at, looking for the number four, or the grouping of four, and uh, seeing how it applies to the world. Uh, 15, verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps. Of God. Now, some of these things are going to apply to the world, but after we're gone from the world, either by death or by rapture, some of these are going to take place in the in the uh, tribulation. Uh, but there's four things: uh, victory over the beast and over his image. And over his mark and over the number of his name. So we see some things here that, in fact, four that are going to apply to some of the people in the world that are living at that point. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a tough time. You know, if you can't buy or sell, uh, you know, you're in, in pretty, you, you're in hurts. You got a family. And you can't keep that family going because you can't buy or sell. It's going to be a tough time. Yeah. And if the only way you can is to take the mark, the name of the Antichrist, it's going to be a tough time. That's going to be a tough decision. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I, I'm weak. 
Praise the Lord, I don't have to go through it Amen. and make those decisions. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's the world's view of these things. Uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, number four again, we're in Revelations, I kind of like to kind of keep, it's easier to get to where we're going and quickly. Uh, let's go to uh, chapter 20 in Revelation and verse 2. And verse 2 says, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Well, we We've got an adversary out there, and he goes by basically four names. He goes by the name of the dragon, and you know, oftentimes we see in uh, pictures uh, relating to uh, the devil or Satan as a dragon. We also know by the serpent. You know how the serpent does it. I don't know about you, but uh, I remember at the time my mother, well, I wasn't around at that time, but uh, I remember the story that she tells me. She, she uh, on the stairway, going upstairs where she lived, uh, she had dropped a belt, or so she thought. And so she, when she went and picked up the belt, it turned out not to be a belt, but a serpent. And uh, needless to say, she spent the rest of the day outside, and my father could never find that thing, which really made it kind of scary. And uh, in fact, it wasn't later, or very much longer, that she moved out. With, with my dad, but moved out of the house uh, because they never could find a serpent. And uh, she wasn't about to have another, so he works subtly. Amen. And so we think, uh, and I don't know about you folks, I've come upon a snake that didn't, thankfully, it didn't rattle that thing, but uh, it didn't uh, bark or meow or make some kind of noise and all at once I saw it there and uh, at least I was prevented on stepping on it or, or something of that nature but so we have we have the, the prince of this world the old devil the serpent uh, Satan uh, the dragon uh, he's an adversary for the world He's an adversary to us. He's accuser of us. He presents things to us that uh, temptations and trials and so forth. So, so we've got to be aware of him. And that's yeah. in the world now. Time to go, so we're going to close it down. But uh, anybody have any questions or anything? No question. Okay, well, that's good. We'll take a break and.